<coughs> so, oh, good morning, everyone. <coughs> a few of us survived to the first day, <laughs> so let's hope that uh, we all survive to the second day as well, and hopefully reach the end. Um, so I will entertain you for no more than 15 minutes. Uh, this morning uh, we just, uh, this is not a talk, this want to be a sort of uh, uh, incentive for discussion uh, that we can have today and tomorrow. Uh, there will be a lecture tomorrow, it will be the last lecture about the future of uh, 3D printing by Alessandro and he will give us some hints and for, for further discussion but I want to introduce the argument of uh, open issues on of the low-cost 3D printing technology. So what we hope for and what we are fearing now, um, problem that we that, that may be arising uh, uh, in, in, the, in, the, in the immediate future. So uh, you already know who I am, so I'm not pr uh, introducing myself. Uh, this is just a picture of the lab when there was a lab. So before we moved all the printers here, uh, we had a nice lab with full of printers. Now is a completely empty room uh, because everything is here actually. Uh, so the idea is we all agree that uh, low cost 3D printing is going to be important. It's going to be relevant. Maybe we can call it a revolution. Maybe we will call it a revolution afterwards. Uh, before, uh, it's not a good idea to call something a revolution before it happens. But uh, um, So the uh, common um, uh, idea is that those machines will change the world. And uh, more or less we all agree on that. But there are a few open questions that uh, may be worth to uh, discuss briefly. Uh, this is uh, uh, a parallel between, say, between two big revolutions uh, that happened in the last 50 years. The one of the personal computer, uh, it started with a very complex machine that only mm, technicians were able to, to operate. Uh, crazily expensive, uh, uh, using a full room. Uh, like this, this was the first web server of ICTP, actually. Uh, this, these things here. Uh, but then immediately a group of smart people that we, we didn't call hackers at that time, but they were hackers, they started uh, to think how can we build our own computer? And they started with something that was homemade in a garage uh, with a wooden enclosure and something like that. This reminds us very much of the actual situation. We have now our first printer that are made out of a wood frame most of the time, uh, built in a garage and uh, developed by smart people that now we call makers uh, or hackers anyway. And they are just uh, the, 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 the children of the big professional, um, sorry, of the big professional um, printers that um, that are, were available since maybe 25 years, but uh, terribly expensive for us. So we go. We already went from the professional series of printer to the first personal printer. Uh, the next step, if we look at the story of personal computing, is the real personal, the real PC developed for the masses and uh, very low cost and uh, available for everybody all around the world uh, with a lot of application for it. This has not yet happened for the 3D printers. Uh, it may happen, it may not. Uh, a lot of people is betting uh, money, a lot of money uh, on, on these things to happen. Uh, we still miss uh, killer application for that. We still miss clear ideas, but uh, uh, there is a possibility to have uh, real mass produced personal printers and maybe portable personal printers like we have the portable PC nowadays, uh, whatever will happen. So if this is uh, the possible scenario for the future, uh, the current paradigm of local 3D printing is not fitting well. Because now, uh, if you look around uh, to the printer we, we, we can use nowadays, they almost uh, look like the same. They use plastic filament, uh, 3 millimeter one, 1.75 millimeter one, uh, ABS, maybe PLA, um, the software is open source software, free. There are many uh, of such software, but they all, all look like the same or very similar anyway. So, um, say the market uh, uh, for those things 
is really targeting the same type of people, it's really using the same sources. Um, we make use of uh, low-cost um, PC boards, uh, open hardware, philosophy. Uh, some printer may replicate themselves, you may print part of other printers. Uh, all those things we know it very well. Is it the only possible uh, scenario for low-cost 3D printing? Maybe not. Uh, let's ask us a question. Uh, we are buying, we are purchasing, we are building printers. Where is our money going? What we pay for? We don't pay for the technology itself, for, for, I mean, for patent, because the patent as, as of FDM has expired. So it's a free to use idea, the technology, the basic technology itself. We don't pay for the design of the printer because the printer uh, were designed by smart people that wanted to make them available for free as open hardware. Okay, so we, there's no royalties for the Prusa Mendel design or whatever we are going to choose. We pay for the parts, for the motors, for the metal bar, for uh, all the small uh, gears and, and screws. We pay for the assembling if we decide to buy a pre-assembled printer. We don't pay for the software, at least for the slicing software. There are some software that you, you may purchase, um, NetFab for example, or other proprietary software, but most of the time uh, we don't pay for that. Uh, sometimes we pay for professional 3D modeling software. AutoCAD is not free, but um, there are uh, free options. So, I mean, we are still free to, to have uh, software that we don't need to, that we don't pay. Sometimes we pay for the brand because we trust uh, this printer instead of the other printer. So we want to put a little of, of money just because we want to buy something that looks uh, more reliable, more uh, precise or whatever. We pay for the plug and play style of printer because we don't want to, uh, sometimes some of us, uh, we don't want to waste or invest most of our time to do the building by ourselves or uh, tinkering with the machines or, or solving the, the problems. Uh, and of course we pay for the plastic. So those are uh, the place where the market enter in the game, where the money is. Um, is it possible to have a new type of party, a new scenario for this, new place where where money can go. I'm sorry to talk about money early in the morning. It's, it's something that I don't like to do before breakfast, usually. Even, even after dinner is not something that I like to do. But uh, if you want to understand how things are going in the big scenario, uh, we have to look at the trend of the money streams, unfortunately, in this world, uh, actually. So uh, let's ask to ourselves, is it possible to have other scenarios for that? Uh, let's imagine that we are going to become a 3D printer manufacturer. So I want to create a Carlo Fonda printer, the CF printer, like the CB that, is, uh, that are the initial of another engineer, I guess, or something like that. So I want to create my, my company. Uh, if I want really to succeed, if I want to be the next uh, Microsoft, the next IBM, the next Apple of 3D printing, because remember that idea that they are going to, to be as huge as the personal computer. We want to become as huge as the big uh, players of personal computer. Uh, what should we do? We should have a product that is only our product, that has a, a unique uh, appeal to, to, to consumers, to customers. Uh, we cannot do this with the technology. So we cannot patent a new technology probably today, uh, we will discuss this later on, but it's unlikely that we will find uh, a completely new design for a printer. It's possible, and we, we should discuss this, but it's more likely that uh, we are going to have new materials. There is plenty of space for new materials for low-cost printers, and probably models, 3D models of objects that we may want to sell. If you want to sell something, we want to have rights in order that people <coughs> do not copy them. You know that uh, copying a file is a rather easy task. And uh, there were a long fighting between the company that were selling us files like music, uh, movies, uh, books, uh, in order to protect them rights. So we should maybe discuss about the digital uh, uh, rights uh, system, how it works. Uh, I was telling you that probably there is no space for new, brand new technologies. Well, there are low-cost printers that are not FDM or FFF based. Uh, 
you can call them low cost this printer the formula form one from form lab uh, this is a laser sintering printer it uses a liquid resin that is cured by the laser uh, it's very nice very precise the cost is around three thousand and two hundred dollars uh, I, I, I looked it yesterday they promised to sell it for two thousand dollars so probably it's, it's, it's going to it this was increased for some technical reason they promised to, to ship it uh, uh, last year the end of last year now uh, the, uh, actually on the website you can pre-order for July so we don't know but and this is already patent since a long time but apparently uh, there is space for there is even an Italian company that is producing a very similar printer it may happen that a new technology will uh, will became relevant at the moment it is still not so relevant I say and <coughs> what about new printer designs okay we remain with our filament printer F FFF or FDM uh, the Repra people made a very good job of testing plenty of different designs. They tried all the possible geometries and the uh, way to feed the filament, uh, Bowden extruder, direct extruder, uh, whatever you may imagine. So some are better than others, some are more troublesome. Um, it's unlikely that a new revolutionary design will came, and especially that it will came out of a company, not. Uh, I may imagine other smart people in the RepRap group developing a new design for a printer because there are many of them trying. Uh, it's unlikely that uh, a company may come out with a revolutionary design that nobody has thought of before. It may happen, ne never say never, so, but I will not bet all my money on this, let's say. My cat is, is very interested in doing that. So this is uh, probably going to design, the, the cut is going to design a new printer very soon. He was all, already trying to modify the, the Thingomatic things uh, in many ways. So we hope that he will not patent by himself, but will allow us to patent the new design or, or to share it for free, even better. So, uh, so th th this is the current situation. What can we uh, foresee for the future? Well, uh, there is a, another possibility for, um, for, for somebody that wants to become the, the big player in this market, uh, to overcome the uh, current limitation of low-cost printers. That are many. Uh, as we will understand today, uh, our printers can do many things, but there are many more things that those printers cannot do. Printing, uh, big things. Small is beautiful, I, I agree with that. Uh, but uh, the dimension that we are constrained to with the local printer are quite uh, uh, limiting. It's 20 times 20 times 20 centimeters is uh, almost the standard. Some printers are even smaller than that. Y we can print bigger models, just assembling uh, parts or enlarging our printers. Some printers make it uh, quite easy to increase the vertical dimension, for example, some design of printer like uh, the Delta um, uh, robots and so. Uh, it's not so easy to enlarge very much the horizontal uh, dimension of the plate because of some mechanical problem, the belts, uh, the, the bars and so. Uh, it's possible, but uh, I don't see uh, an easy way to make a printer that can print one meter by, by one meter for one reason it will take days and days and weeks of time so um, we can still print multiple parts and assemble them together uh, uh, all my love is for you as you see uh, we can assemble this nice earth uh, but um, this is a limitation that uh, will be good to solve I would love to see a printer that can print me a sort of big object in a short time <coughs> and with the reliable results. We may need uh, uh, to overcome another limitation. Now, even if we design our, op uh, our own objects instead of uh, downloading from the internet, uh, we have to do some additional works. Okay, we decide the shape, we design our, our, our model, but uh, most of the time, half of the time, the slicing software will complain that the model is not uh, watertight, it's not working, it's not slicing, from one or the other reason. So. Uh, it would be nice to have software that does everything without asking a crazy question like uh, should I flip uh, a face? I don't know, you do whatever you like. Uh, print <laughs> this for me. But uh, we have to answer continuously all those questions. Yes, flip the face, uh, cover the hole. Well, uh, it would be nice to have a, a smarter software. It would be nice to have a printer that can print uh, objects with a better resolution, more details, a nice texture of surface. Most of the time, the surface texture is not de defined by us. It's defined by 
by all uh, the hundreds of parameters that we don't know how to set. So maybe flat, maybe a little bit raw, maybe smooth. Uh, it's something out of our control most of the time. We'd be nice to have a, a such type of control on the object that we print. It uh, would be nice to have a, a to that the slicing part of the game will became less uh, an art and more uh, a proce standard procedure. Now I spend most of my time deciding how to configure the slicer. Most of the time I, I just put random numbers, uh, and the results are different, of course. <laughs> um, um, you may. You may do a lot of tests, we may play for days and days, and then at the end we never understand exactly what was the reason why the object went not so well. And uh, you know, it would be nice to overcome those things. Uh, some people will think, but this is the nice part of 3D printing. I agree. If you want to, to, to use your time to learn, it's good to, to do all those tests. But if you need the object, you don't want to spend days just to think how to uh, overcome the overhangs and do all the things properly. You want the object at the end of the day. So for a real mass uh, product, uh, those things should be smoothed out. Uh, support, uh, uh, all, all such things. Uh, removing the support is a big pain in the neck. Uh, <coughs> Uh, deciding about the raft and the skirt and uh, how to uh, have a support that sticks, uh, uh, an object that sticks on the platform is always a problem. Oh, I'm printing PLA, but I, I have a cold bed, so I should use the tape. Which tape is the good one? The blue one? Uh, light blue is not so good. Uh, you know, uh, it would be nice to have something that uh, do not ask us uh, to do all the configuration in the infill and so on and so forth. So at the end of the day, we have an ideal uh, uh, object for uh, I mean, a goal for our printing, uh, likely to be something uh, less ideal. In the worst case, uh, we end up with nothing. Uh, actually, a very nice artistic uh, uh, design of plastic, but not uh, the object that uh, we really uh, wanted. <coughs> so, uh, if somebody can overcome those limitations, it will have a huge part of the market. And uh, we will be allowed to print our wonderful uh, creation and design them, and maybe find a killer application for the technology. Printing, I don't know what. At the moment, we are printing gadgets most of the time. Uh, small part that may be useful, part for other printers. This is a little bit uh, of self, uh, uh, say, consideration, but uh, <coughs> we still miss something uh, relevant to do. This was for the part about the, the technology itself and the design of the printer. What if we uh, want to invest and develop new material? Plastic is our current material. Uh, we are living in a world of plastic. I will not spend more work because uh, Alessandro mm, was uh, and, uh, talking about this yesterday. Um, and I think also others. Uh, there are some materials that we are uh, using now that we know very well. ABS, we know PLA, somebody is printing in nylon. I love nylon. This is a piece printed in nylon. Very nice, very light, very strong. Uh, PVA is water-soluble uh, plastic used for support. Uh, we can print in uh, polystyrene. Uh, also soluble, uh, soluble but not in water, in a more complex uh, 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 component. And there are others. Uh, uh, here you can have example of uh, the wooden part, printed with a plastic that has some percentage of wood powder. Uh, we can print in soft PLA to make a belt uh, and tires and parts that are flexible. We can print in temperature sensitive ABS that change the color with the temperature. It's very nice. I think there is one piece uh, you can show around. Okay, even, even the octopus. If you touch it, it became yellow. Uh, above 30 degrees. Um, there are, those are the, the, the things that we can print now. But there is plenty of space for improvement for new materials. Uh, <coughs> the problem is that uh, if now we are forced to buy the filament, uh, and uh, if you want to make it by ourselves, it's hard. Uh, there are some projects, uh, there are companies that are trying to sell uh, filament extruders. A uh, few examples are here. The, I think the first one was uh, uh, Mr. Hugh Lyman. 
Uh, he was a, a young inventor, only 83 years old. He won a prize for his uh, design of a, a filament extruder. I think it was the first filament extruder design. Uh, this is a picture of the Lyman filament. So uh, yesterday we were commenting that uh, uh, yesterday evening we were this commenting that the Prusa guy is very young. Was a very young guy when he invented the, his printer. Was 21 years old. But there is space for uh, 83 years old people as well. So uh, there is a huge range of ages that uh, can benefit from 3D printing. But it's hard. I tried to order the part for a filament extruder. I wanted to have a filament extruder here, but uh, nobody is selling them. They promise that they will sell it. They give you some, some hints on how to build by yourself. Uh, it's not so easy. Uh, so it's something that sh still has to happen. Uh, <clears throat> of course, there is people that is already doing that. I want to repeat the, uh, that the people of Perpetual Plastic Project are doing a great job of showing that this is possible and this is what we should all do. It's not something that is a nice idea by itself only, but it's important for everybody for avoiding the pollution, for recycling the plastic, for saving a lot of money, for saving the environment. So um, uh, one of the big revolution in local 3D printing will happen when we will be able to build or purchase or find a printer that can inject uh, uh, pieces of plastic uh, bottles and glasses and whatever, my old glasses, uh, whatever is, is available and shrink them and, and create objects. So this is the idea. <coughs> what else? Other materials. Um, we want to print in full colors. We want to have more plastics. This is the first step. So just uh, this will happen probably soon. New type of plastic are coming. Uh, but we will like to print in metal. And that is not coming very soon. Uh, we want to print ceramics. We would like to print circuits with the conductive material. We would like to print uh, optical parts, lenses, uh, with the transparent material. And there are research, ongoing research on that. We want to print sensors that can sense environment. We want to print uh, motors, I mean, things that can move by themselves, smart materials. All those things may happen. This may be a big revolution. <coughs> and uh, the last things I want to mention for discussion today and tomorrow is uh, there is space also for people that want to design the objects. And uh, the market for the models uh, many, th many people think that there will be a huge market for models. Now there is a huge market for music or for movies. And uh, movies, I cannot make a movie and probably, okay, maybe Antonio can make a movie and publish on YouTube and make a live out of it. But uh, few people can do that. But more people can create a, th their own music maybe and sell them on the web and, and get some money out of it. Uh, in future, maybe more and more people will be able to to, to, to have a, a job, let's say, creating objects for others. <coughs> Why this? I, see, I, I think that this is possible. Uh, because of this interesting uh, uh, law that was discovered by this guy, Chris Anderson, uh, in the book, The Long Tail. What is the long tail? Uh, the market uh, offers uh, plenty of products, but there are few products that are very popular. Uh, we can make a statistic here, how, how many of you have a smartphone? Probably half of you have a smartphone here in the pocket, probably 90% of you have a smartphone. And if we, if we try to, to find which model of smartphone, probably there are two or three models that are very popular, and then somebody else has another model that is not so popular, and then, and then nothing else. Uh, and this happens in all the categories of, of objects. There are a few uh, leaders of the market that make the most popular products. So we end up all having the same things. We, we use the same type of clothes and the same type of uh, computers. And so this is the head of the, of, the, of the market. But there is a long tail. We want to have objects that are personalized. Uh, it's like with books. There are a few titles of books that everybody wants to, to read, maybe. Well, for sure, there are a few books that everybody can buy because all the bookshop show you the top 10. But if you really need the book that was published 25 years ago in some other country with a strange title in a, for, for a particular aspect of thing that you want to learn, uh, you are not so lucky in finding in the, in the bookshop. You have to order. And the only place where you will find such a book probably is Amazon. So 
there is a market for things that few people is interested in, uh, but uh, there are many of such things. This is the tile. So maybe 10 people will buy this book, but Amazon is, is, is very proficient. I mean, it's a very good company. They are making a lot of money selling one book, but to millions of people. Instead of selling a million of phones to the same, I mean, to, to a million of people. So many products customized for single users, not few products that are for everybody. So the idea, the end of the tail is where n is 1, when there is one product for each user, for each customer. And this is only possible with personal manufacturing like 3D printing. A uh, company cannot produce uh, at a low price objects that are customized for each of us. I cannot have my version of my phone with, uh, I want a larger, a thicker one uh, with uh, two buttons instead of one, so please Apple make one for me. They will not do it. In order to have uh, this price or to have this revenue for them, they want to produce the same phone for everybody. If I want my phone, I have to print it, probably. So this is, uh, this is the way it may work. But if I want to m have my personal object, somebody has to design it for me. Or I, I have to have the tools to design it easily. So there are ways we can duplicate objects, but this will be all the same. We cannot duplicate uh, objects and, and I mean, we have to ca if we want to reach this market, we have to customize them. Um, so even uh, the use of 3D printing for making copies is not probably the key application of the market. Creating new object is a key application, it's a killer application. Um, but this means we, somebody has to design them. There are models of archives on the web that you can download for free. You think about Thingiverse uh, or GrabCAD. Uh, they are still free, people is sharing. This is a very good model, of course. Uh, I'm, I'm very happy that this exists, but uh, a uh, few people is making money out of it. There are other models, business model. Cubify is giving out uh, designs for free, but they want to sell their printers. So it's sort of, okay, I give you the model, but you print it on my printer. Or in um, places like Shapeways, uh, they are in the business of printing. So they give some model for free, but they sell uh, the digital model as well. And uh, they don't make them. They collect models from people and they resell them, sort of. So the fact is that even now, if you are a good designer, uh, you may design objects that everybody would like to have. You can put them on shapeways and get money out of it. So this is a huge market that may be worth to explore for the future. Uh, so if we think of a new, something new that nobody has, has designed before, this is not new. Uh, <coughs> But if you have something that we think is maybe important, already we can uh, make it a source of income for us. And not just for us here in the developed world, but everybody around the world that has access to a computer and to the internet can design objects and sell them on the internet and make money out of it. Uh, and then there are objects that uh, are say, under discussion. Uh, this was presented yesterday, was, uh, the file was made available. Yes, this is the first printable gun. And uh, most of the repository, they don't want to share this file, they don't want to publish this file. But for example, DevCAD is the website that uh, want to share files that are forbidden files, like a uh, model for guns. And this is under a big discussion. And so we are approaching the last slide. I'm finished with that. Uh, probably there is, uh, uh, many people is thinking how to get money out of the models. Um, now, if you buy a model from Shapeways, you are free to make copies of it and send to all your friends. Uh, but uh, there is already patent uh, for company. Actually, this company is a, is a patent troll, so we are not really sure that this is going to be a serious attempt. But people are thinking how to uh, block rights on the models, how to put DRM, digital right management, on 3D models. If this happens, there is going to be a big debate, I'm sure, it's already starting. So, um, this is something we may want to discuss. Thank you for your patience.